Oh, come on, baby, please. I will get him this time. Come on. Get into the net. We have come so net. close to seeing Takahiro Omori make a final day, and this time, this time he's done it. Yeah. His story of coming to America from Come Tokyo on. is so good, and we are so proud to have him. Hold on. And we started this event three days ago with 175 oh, pros circus. duking it out, and Takahiro it will fish fun. one more day yep. for the big prize. I get it. All right. Thank you. There you go. Sorry. Look at this. This Didn't is pots. This is... This is big spots. That's not large enough. That's spots. Lake Martin here is noted for big Kentucky spotted bass, and Aaron Martins is about 10 or 12 feet away from the one that would extend his stay here. Rick Clun, who seems to think we have a permanent position for him in the top five, will be with us again as Seiji Keto, a Japanese co-angler, boats the, uh, as the pros call it, the kicker fish. <laughs> Gosh, man, it's pulling so hard. Just, just take a line again, all the way down to the bottom. Rick Klun is not the only legend we're dealing with today. Guido Hibden, always worth the price of admission, will be with us as well. What a story. Could he win it all? Look at him. Just don't give up, man. Three spots filled and two to go there, Aaron. Aaron there with Willie White, who went on to win the Co-Angler Championship here on Lake Martin. We're pulling for you, Aaron. Could be our first finalist from California. Clun, Hibden, Omori, and now Ricky Shumpert takes another of the five spots. One left. Well, we are going to learn about Good drop job. shotting for Good bass job. today as Aaron man. Martins will be with us. But the big question is, will it take largemouth or spotted oh, bass to win? Yeah, there's more spotted bass in the lake. It's that simple. I mean, there's a lot more. There's a larger abundance of spotted bass. So that's going to be in the favor of the guys that are looking for them. You know, they'll, they'll connect quicker than the guys looking for largemouth. Everything's kind of playing into the hands of a spotted bass fisherman if he can get those quality three-pound bites. That's a Lake Martin largemouth and a really fine specimen. This jawbone, this plate right here will, on a spotted bass will never protrude past the eye. On a largemouth bass, it always does. And another surefire way to tell if it's a spotted bass, they'll have a patch of teeth on their tongue. That runs true about 99.9% .9 of the time. On average, I think the largemouth in this lake run bigger than the spotted bass. The way you basically can tell if they're not bigger is that you have a mandible plate that extends behind the eye of the fish. When it's closed, the mouth's closed, there'll be a, a hinge slightly behind the eye. Also, the, the girth is different. The, the largemouth are a little shorter and stockier in proportion to spotted bass. A spotted bass will always have a little gold, a little more gold or yellow color on the bottom. And always, usually, the lateral line will be much more pronounced. I think if a guy could put a limit of largemouth together, he'd run away with this thing. I mean, the quality in the largemouth mouth on average are better. This time of year, the largemouth bass move up uh, awful quick. So it, uh, it, it's going to be a real good shootout. Uh, I really think uh, Aaron's got a real good shot at winning this thing uh, uh, totally with spotted bass. It's six of one, half dozen the other on, on any day. You don't know for sure. This is the very nice Kentucky spotted bass. Spots are much easier to catch and much more predictable fish. Why couldn't I catch you? <laughs> I didn't expect fish this big fish. Man, fishing is bomb. Look at this fish. Look. If it's not far, you die. <laughs> Dead. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Snickers Cruncher. Hungry? Crunch this. By Coleman, the outdoor recreation company. Buy the Visa $2 million challenge. Log on to FLWTour.com. And by Kenny Chesney, Greatest Hits.
This month's FLW Tour Stop introduced some brand new competitors to the co-angler side of the series in a special angler exchange program. Four Japanese fishermen came to the U.S. to fish the FLW Tour. Seiji Kato was lucky enough to finish in the top ten and be paired with a familiar Sir, face. He speaks English. Oh, you do speak English? Yeah, a little? Yeah. A lot more than... I, I know Ichi Ni Son Chigo. Japanese. And I know Kato. <laughs> Mr. Kato had a fan club and the remaining three exchange fishermen were among thousands of Japanese anglers who avidly follow American bass fishing. All week long again, they came in their invitation to compete in the Walmart FLW Tour and we're going to have hopefully an announcement tomorrow of an exchange program where we're going to send four American anglers from some of our sponsored teams over to compete in one of their national championships. But they've been to the light, guys. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Seiji so Kato had a good guys. tournament by any country's standards, placing third in the co-angler competition and taking home that ever-elusive check. <laughs> <laughs> The official Tomax time is 6.30. Boat number one, he's on out. Check in at 2.30. Don't be late. Here we go with the 2001 Walmart FLW Tour, our event here on Lake Barton down in Alabama. A tough field of five fishing in the finals, and we are underway. Check out this field. One of the legends of bass fishing, Guido Hibden. And Guido, they say the uh, the hard days are over. You beat 160 of them. Now you just got to beat four of them. Well, you kind of down to it now. I mean, it's, uh, I feel good about it. You know, fish are coming up where I can finally get to look at them a little bit. Just a matter of trying to catch them now. Well, you say even though you can see them now that it's warming up, it's not a given that you're able to catch them just yet. No, no, it, it takes three or four days. You know, I'm just pushing it right now, but the heck of it is, I've seen the right size fish. So you have no interest in second place today? No, none at all. I, well, I tell you what, we're looking forward to you giving us a clinic on fishing boat docks at the, at the least. Well, I'll do that, I bet you. Okay. Stay with us, Jerry McKinnis. We got him up in the sky. He's going to give us some more information about Lake Martin here. Well, normally Lake Martin is a beautiful, clear lake, but uh, we've had a lot of high water here in the past few days, and uh, that has changed a lot of things. But that's kind of the bad news. The good news is, boy, it doesn't seem to have affected the fishing at all. Lake Martin is located between Birmingham and Montgomery, about the center part of the state of Alabama. Uh, we've got Boy, 500,000 plus acres and 700 plus miles of shoreline. It's a big lake. Uh, lots of creeks, lots of pockets and cove. Now the, the Tallapoosa is the main river. It's the main source of water. And in the past uh, six or eight days, I'd say there's been about a seven foot rise. That's the reason we got a little muddy water and, and a lot of floating debris on the upper part of the lake. Uh, I'd say that from about Sandy Creek, which is probably the halfway point, from Sandy Creek on up, it, it's pretty muddy. Uh, still fishable, but a lot of it is kind of muddy. And then from Sandy on down, it's a lot clearer. And, and in fact, it looks a lot different. It is a, a different lake. And it fishes a lot different, too. You know, uh, uh, you can fish in the murkier water in the upper end of it uh, and, and expect to catch largemouth, fish a lot shallower. And when you get down in the other part of the lake, the lower end of the lake, uh, the water obviously is lots clear. You're fishing for spotted bass, and you're fishing for, um, uh, oh, you're fishing for largemouth too, but primarily spotted bass, and you're fishing deeper. Now, that is not to say that you can't catch spotted bass all over the lake or largemouth all over the lake. Now, here's something really interesting, though. Uh, Tommy is screaming down the lake or up the lake with Guido Hibden. Uh, he's probably going to end up around the Kalija Creek, though, I bet, before the day is over. Guido is. And uh, we're up here looking all over Lake Martin, run from one end of it to the other. We've got two anglers, Takahiro Amori and Rick Clun, who are fishing five minutes from the launching ramp. Easy to have inches. But... We don't want to have small fish today. We want to find a big one. <laughs> I want to keep it right now. 
But uh, like, like I said, today I, I fish to win. I don't care if I finish second to the fourth, fifth. I, I have to fish to win. Cause just it's a big difference, first place and the second place. I knew that. That's way bigger than I thought it'd be. It's a beat up old spot. Look at that, he's blind in one eye. It's amazing that fish could get that bait in this dirty water. He's blind in one eye. It tells you how important that ladder line is, probably. I go by feel. There's his good side. It's a good, good start right there. That makes me very happy. Oops, sorry, buddy. Oh, that was neat. I like that. If the whole day goes like that, this would be a fun day. All right, well, we've made it down the lake with Guido here. We've stopped at one of these boat docks here. Now, Guido Hibden, of course, one of the pioneers of fishing with soft plastics. He's got that today. Little finesse worm about that long. It's got sort of a jig head or weighted hook that he's designed and made himself. It's truly a unique sort of rig. Guido says it's going to take a lot of precision to fish these docks properly, to hit some tiny targets in between these styrofoam blocks. Should be a lot of fun to watch today. Back up to Jerry McKinnis. I think he's going to try to start one of the conversations with our fishermen. I'm on my way back in. How about... Talking to us again a little bit about your drop shot method of fishing. Well, actually, I'll try it. There's a, I, I got a lot more, lot more activity on the graph today than I did yesterday. There's a lot more fish moving around. So I can pull that out, no problem. Let's try it out. The drop shot, I'm using a lot, I'm using six pound line on the drop shot. And I went with a little longer leader today. I got a little, but maybe like a 15, 16 inch leader. The same little four and a half inch worm I've been throwing the whole trip, whole tournament. And a light, medium light rod, I'm just kind of trying to find where the fish are at and the rocks are at. A lot, a lot of these islands out here have like, they'll have like little rock piles on them. A lot of it's not, a lot of it's kind of flat and gravelly. I'm trying to find those rocks. And uh, I didn't get much practice, so I'm kind of practicing today. I didn't, I haven't hit this island today, but I mean, this whole trip. I hit a point back there twice in the tournament, never got a bite off it. And this morning I got about a two and a half pound spot off it. So I'm just kind of going to go around and fish all these islands and uh, work my way up to my stuff I'm fishing, my, my primary stuff. And uh, hopefully by the time I get there, maybe I'll have a, I'll have a nice limit or something. Yesterday you uh, actually broke a fish or two off. Is that kind of unusual for you? Yeah, that's, that's very, <laughs> very uncommon. I haven't done that in probably, I mean, I had a tournament last year. I had break to break off in one day i just i don't normally break fish off and i think maybe it's excitement or you know you never know a spots i mean a lot of times they, they can even get brush your knot with their teeth and break you off i mean it, it seemed like they broke a lot easier than they should have and uh it was pretty unfortunate but luckily i made the top five today so yeah it, it, it worked out all right yeah you know, I, I would like for people to understand that you know of course we saw you uh doing such a great job of landing that one fish and the thing that is so important for both this method and for landing fish is the rod that you use. Would, would you not agree? I agree with you 100% on that, Jerry. Um, that's why I like that. I like a six and a half foot medium light rod. It's got a nice bend in it. And also my, uh, what I'm shaking with, uh, test rigging with my bait casters got a real medium light action too. So you want something that has a lot of bend in it, takes a lot of shock out when you're using night line like that. You want something that's gonna take a lot of that shock and they shake their head and when they, do those lunges they do, and you don't want a real stiff rod. You'll break a lot of fish off or you'll pull the hook out. So yeah, a soft rod's pretty important. Well, Aaron, we'll get on out of your hair right now. I, I do have to say, though, that it's a pleasure having someone from uh, out in the west in our top five. I believe that's the first for us. Good luck to you, and we'll see you back at the weigh-in in, in uh, several hours from now. Thank you, Jerry. A lot of the points are normally on the top of the top of the points, like about two two foot. You may get more bites, but uh, sometimes the end of the point, sometimes uh, deeper side the points. So basically, I just fish everything. 
just back in the falls. Well, I'm Tommy Sanders. Jerry McKinnis and I are ready to settle in and watch five competitive anglers go at it in one of Alabama's finest lakes, Lake Martin. And one of the many stories we have here today, Tommy, is the fact that uh, Takahiro and Rick Clun are fishing. Man, I tell you what, they're going to get very familiar with each other's techniques because they're inside of each other all day long. There'll be no secrets. None whatsoever. And, and both of them are primarily fishing with crankbaits, small crankbaits. And um, I know Rick, whenever he pulls up to a, a submerged log or submerged bush like this, he's going to flip a jig in it. But, whoo, he's got him a good start there. <laughs> but you know what? I think that it isn't a good example of how he's going to be fishing most of the day. Well, that's not how he's been catching him this week. No, he's fishing a, a his regular crankbait. He's actually fishing a small crankbait, and so is Takahiro, covering as much water as they possibly can in that good area they have. I'm throwing a a barrel swivel, a relatively large barrel swivel with a five aught gamagatsu hook and an eight inch cream bubble gum colored worm. I'm um, rigging it Texas rig because I'm fishing it in a lot of cover. I'm rigging it straight. I'm actually pulling the worm when I hook it. I'm pulling the worm down tight to give it just a little bit of a bend. And what it does, I let it sink with that swivel, and when I work it, the worm actually darts back and forth, almost like a czar spook would on top. But it's doing it about 18 to 20 inches under the water. And these fish are moving up, and they're getting ready to spawn, and they're looking for something a little bit quieter than a spinnerbait or a crankbait sometimes, and it's something that everybody's not throwing. There he is. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what we're looking for. Four more like that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for breaking the ice. Guido, he's fishing docks you because sure one, there's one fish under him, and two, there are plenty of folks that. around to talk with. <clears throat> they just don't bite very good early in the morning. Usually we hear the opposite complaint. Most uh, of these guys are worried about getting there too late for their fish. His are early, though? They're always wanting the early bite, aren't they? No, I, uh, incidentally, I think this is a, a helper of Guido's right there. <laughs> Scout. I, <laughs> Scout. No, that sunshine hitting the water at this time of the year really needs to warm it up. And, and these fish, they're down a little deeper, start drifting towards the surface some. And, and that, of course, what is what Guido really likes because he is a sight fisherman he loves to see his fish and uh, we're going to talk about drop shotting uh, later on in the show with Aaron Martins who's the king of that around here right now but you know what Guido is fishing the exact same way right now uh, drop shotting really works for this guy and Guido uh, as they fish for those dock fish well, Guido Hibden he has been responsible for a lot a lot of fishing innovations but he does not take credit for this new drop shotting technique. No, it's not. I mean, I have to give the credit to Aaron. I mean, Aaron's kind of the one that got me started doing it. I just, those fish on Lake of the Ozarks are so darn big. And I was really hoping my wife and my son could be here today and they were gonna check on flying down and I called last night and she's sick, she's got either a sinus infection or a head cold or something. She was feeling real bad last night and they were gonna try and drive anyway. And I told her, no, don't, you know, don't worry about it. You know, just go to Walmart and you'll get to see me on TV a little bit. Um, but she was really upset that she couldn't make it. But uh, I would have liked for them to have been here, but also I hope she, she gets to feeling better too. Hi Rick, hi Susan. <laughs> 
Well, it's a long way from Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks, but Guido looks right at home here. Oh, and I hope this is not a rules violation, getting info from another fisherman. Who is that on the bank there? Hmm, suspicious. This is the Walmart FLW Tour. We're back on Lake Martin here in East Central Alabama, a legendary bass fishing lake. And let's locate our five anglers. Rick Shumford, Rick Clun, and Takahiro are all in the Wind River area of the lake. And down in Kalija Creek, we find Aaron Martins and Guido Hibden. Takahiro Omori has three fish in the boat so far. A great start for his day. He lives in Emory, Texas, the Lake Fork area, but of course started out in Tokyo, Japan. Came over here about five or six years ago, really not knowing anyone or anything about the American game. And boy, his biggest hurdle, of course, was the was the language. He spoke no English whatsoever. Can you imagine coming from a foreign country, not knowing how to communicate? All right. You see what's happened right now? I hung up my crankbait. On the, on the tree, and as soon as I, ha I hung, he hit it. That's how I get this bit, this fish. It's number four. Omori well, looking really strong at this point, but never ever count this guy out. And Guido, of course, is a dock fishing son of a gun, and I think he'll be the first guy to tell you that when you're fishing a dock, to not just pick out any old dock. Look for one that is situated in some real good contour. Look at this particular dock that Guido is fishing. Uh, has a nice contour drop on, on one side of it. Those spotted bass, they'll get here in these shallow flats and then move over into the contour. And <coughs> Guido's doing a good job, but I tell you what, Takahiro's already culling. Boy, he is on his way. Takahiro, did the little fishing tournament uh, interfere with your fishing today at all? No, no, I got placed by myself. I got no one, one old fellow this morning uh, gave me all, all his spot to me to the to do a tournament. So, well, we uh, we were just talking here about how accurate your casts need to be and how hard you work to position your boat in the right to where you can get those right casts. You want to talk to us about that just a little bit? Yes, uh, you have to make cast right next to the log and then bump the log actually to, to get by. If, 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 if you are maybe a foot away from the log or, or, or tree, you know, get by because fish is there, just kind of neutral mood. Uh, you have to make a bite. So. I can you, uh, can you actually see these places? Or are some of them under the water? You just know where they're at. Well, uh, some of them, I can see some of them under the water. But this is just big lay down tree. A sunken tree, some of them off the bank, some of them right on the bank. But today, it seems like I get more bites, more large mass bites right on the bank. Maybe two foot, then I get spots. By about 10 foot, they suspended about uh, just under the surface, I think. Well, Takahiro, you said yeah. it, it really seems to be coming together this year. For one of the reasons you, you mentioned was that uh, you finally gotten sort of comfortable here in the United States. You've really gotten to know the culture and, and the culture of uh, yeah. the sport of tournament fishing in the United States. It, 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 you can't learn it overnight. It takes some time to learn, doesn't it? Yeah, this is a, took me five years to qualify this uh, top five. Uh, you got to take time. Yeah, like I said yesterday, uh, I start Use, uh, I start knowing the things I don't need to worry about, then, then I just concentrate just for the finding fish and catching fish now. But most of the time, you have to find out, uh, because fishing changes every day, every hour. So if, you, if somebody told you, like, you had a fish this way, I mean, maybe spinnerbait fish on the bank, maybe three days ago, or a week ago, those things are going to change every day. So you have to do adjust it by yourself to figure out to, to catch the fish on the future, not past. We have not forgotten about our man fishing the drop shot rig here, Aaron Martins, but things have been a little slow for him so far this morning. A little bit later on, we're going to go sort of beneath the surface like we did with Guido and get there Jerry to diagram how he's fishing his spot. All right. Where he come from? 
I have no idea. Why got in the net? <laughs> See? One foot. Ah. Oh. That's good spots. Good one. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Conseco, meeting America's financial needs. By Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans. By Eagle Electronics, successful fishing made simple. And by Energizer. Energizer batteries and flashlights, the power to keep going and going. It's not at all too early to take a look at our leaderboard, and right now, there you see it, Takahiro Omori, squarely on top with a limit of fish. There's plenty of fishing time left. Jerry McKinnis, though, has found another story for us. This show isn't all about fishing, I'm telling you. Hey, I've always said that Steve Daniels was one of our all-time favorites around here on the FLW Tour, but right now, after you hear this story, I think you're going to agree that he is our hero <laughs> forever. Steve, you don't ever have to catch another fish, and you got it made with us. I tell you, tell it? us the story of this dog. Well, I think it was Tuesday, and a man Kim Carver and uh, my wife and mother-in-law, we had a house rented way up in Sturdivant Creek, and uh, and we were working on our boats and stuff, and uh, Kim... This is qualifying, or practice days. Yes, it's the last practice day, and it was day. It was so cold and rainy and snowing, and so we did, I didn't even go fishing that day. I just worked on my stuff, and our boats were in the water, and there's a big log jam in beside the house there, and Kim noticed this dog over in that log jam and it was just kind of falling off a log and anyway he coached it to the bank and finally got it in there and, and she had gotten out of the fenced in yard and under and on the boat ramp and tuesday when we had the snow and the bad wind and the rain she evidently got too far out in the water with our lake levels up more than she's used to and how she got on a log and survived is just a miracle i took it in and got a towel and dried it up and took it in and laid it by the fire and dried it off and and uh you know, we kind of adopted it. It was kind of on its last leg, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, you know, it was real, it was real weak and cold. It was just shivering and and uh, whining, so. But once we took it in, it got by the fire, it was fine. It found another home, but, but uh, you know, we looked around at Kim, went to, at night to houses and stuff just all around the neighborhood. Look, we never could find anybody that had seen this dog until we took it to the weigh-in, was trying to find it at home. We was going to try to find someone to take because Alpo, who is the sponsor of this tournament, gives a lot of the dogs away from, right. the, from the animal shelters away here. Mm -hmm. So we were going to get her all. Debbie gave her a shampoo bath and stuff and got all fixed up. We brought her the weigh-in. And Rhonda and Bill Rucker, who fished the tournament, had said so they thought they'd seen this dog and they described the house and it was in the same creek but it was like two two and a half miles from where we were but me and kim yesterday afternoon we went up the river and went into this cove looking for this house well we thought we found the house but no one was home but the neighbors were home and they said that she had a puppy well i'd actually given up hope after searching around and looking in the sloughs and all around in my area and they had taken her evidently to the weigh-in on Thursday and someone else had spotted her seeing her out on the ramp at my yard and from there they went back up to where the house was and I understand the being the typical professional fisherman one of the ladies that was the wife described the house and the fisherman described the slough. She was had she thought her dog had drowned and so she was all happy so she came and picked up the dog but we kind of got attached oh, to it. Me man, and Kim that's... had already decided if, <laughs> if we didn't like the owner we weren't gonna give it back. <laughs> <laughs> but we hate to leave her. What kind of dog is this now? I think she said she's a uh, half Labrador half a uh, Border Collie. So oh she's man. A super just, intelligent oh, dog. Yeah, she's really beautiful. Smart. I would have never believed that a professional bass fisherman would find my dog floating on a log two and a half miles away from my boat ramp. Uh, well, you know, a lot goes on with these tournaments. A lot more than That's just right. the fishing. That's when we come right. into town, we, you know, we live here, and we uh -huh. meet a lot of nice people around town, and like I say, there's a lot of things going on that, that people don't see at bass tournaments. Okay, well, you don't, like I said, you don't ever have to catch another fish again, <laughs> but you probably want to, don't you? I would love to. I wish I was fishing today. <laughs> Well, not enough credit went to Kim Carver for this happy ending here, so our thanks to Steve and to Kim. Welcome back. It's the Walmart FLW Tour event on Lake Martin in Alabama. The lead belongs to Takahiro Omori, but Aaron Martin from California is starting to catch up. 
Yeah, and Tommy, the map tech folks have given us the exact contour look of the spot where Aaron is fishing right now. Now, check this out. This is the surface of the water going from one point to the other. Aaron's boat is sitting again. right there. Oh, yeah, nice and those fish. spotted bass are down in, look at them little crevices, them little drop-offs down. Boy, spotted bass love those places. Now, Might be a two -pounder. Aaron is two throwing that drop around. shot from his boat and bouncing it off that bluff and dropping it down into these crevices, and that's where those fish are at. Man, I know that the, Make a mistake. that those fish are awful Thanks. deep down there, but Aaron is fishing awful uh, deep. I haven't done a fish by myself in a long time. It's a little harder than it looks. It might be a two-pounder. They're pretty solid fish. They don't look as big as they really are. I mean, that fish right there is probably 114, 115, probably, or right at two pounds. Aaron's rig has a half ounce weight on the bottom of his line. About 18 inches up is where the hook is at. We look back at the fish he just caught. There is the weight. Here's the hook with a robo worm in it. And of course, there's the line headed to the rod tip. Way to tie the drop shot on. The fish's teeth rub right or not. And a lot of times they'll fight. If you have a big fish on, if it had before, after a while of fighting them, they'll just break off. And you'll have a, you'll have a phrase where your line was. It's just the way the, way the line that rubs against her teeth, it's really a, uh, it rubs right there. It's just, it's just different than any other rig. It really frays the line bad. Aaron fishes with spinning tackle, but I want you to pay close attention to his hand in that reel and how he's working that off the bottom. Also, he never gets the rod tip too high. One more time, sinker on the bottom, 18 inches up, worm hook, Texas rig, as a matter of fact, then the line goes to his rod tip. Well, Aaron, as we see here, has moved closer to the Highway 63 bridge, but he's still in pretty deep water, right? I bet he's in 40 feet of water. and. I hope everybody noticed how he kind of leaned into this fish. He didn't snap his rod like you normally do. He just kind of eased back in. And everybody, you know, a lot of the professional fishermen either even worry about breaking their line. Well, he fights this fish on his rod in back reels. He never lets him break his line. A little keeper, man. We will take him right now, though. Hard as a drug. This is the Walmart FLW Tour. We're back on Lake Martin here in East Central Alabama, Big a fish. legendary bass fishing oh, yeah. lake. The keeper, though. Well, Tommy, Martin's is fishing in 40 feet of water, and a lot of the guys like Ricky Shumpert here are fishing in 15 inches, and that's normally the difference between largemouth and spots. Yes. Spot. Hey, I caught a spot. Number five. Thank you. Good news is that's a limit for Ricky Shumford. The bad news is it's only seven pounds. This man right here is still in the lead. His limit only weighs eight pounds, though, but he's trying to upgrade, and this could be the fish that does it. He's fishing with a... A small uh, Norman lure crankbait. Uh, Rick Clun across the creek oh. doing the same thing. That's three pounder. That is a big three pounder in terms well, of this was. tournament here, I'll tell you. Man, that's going to change the scoreboard a little bit. And you know what? I hope everybody thinks that uh, we, we talked to you about the contour under some of these docks that were uh, Guido's fishing, but I hope they don't think that he just throws that under the dock and that's it, boy. He has obviously a tremendous feel for what that lure is doing when it hits the bottom where the fish are laying. I'm telling you what, Guido is a doggone good fisherman. He gets a little help. <laughs> yeah, He's he got does. More help. Another scout working for him here. Guido <laughs> does get a lot of help. He's a team player. This boy, guy. do I enjoy watching him fish, though. You said it, Jerry. There would be a big change in the scoreboard with that last fish by Omori. Look at Takahiro now up to 10 pounds, but Hibden and Martins, they are closing in on him. Clun and Shumpert, they're within striking distance. It's a great contest. And uh, Rick is kind of dragging behind a little bit, but I tell you what, 
Here's the good thing for him. He is fishing for largemouth bass, so one or two strikes, and boy, he'll be right back in there. Here to me. Won't you look at standing underneath that cockeyed thing? I guess I better pay attention to what's going on first, though, isn't it? Thank golly, a fat largemouth all of a sudden. Heck of it is, I don't think either one of them is good enough to help me any, are they? One might be. Well, I feel better. I came to the tournament and made it to the dance and caught a limit of fish. Might not have caught a big one today, yet. Still got time, but I did manage to catch five. The FLW Tour, we're on Lake Martin in Alabama. That man right there is Aaron Martins from Castaic, California. Started out pretty slow today, but he's trying to close the gap between himself and the leaders, Takahiro Omori and Guido Hibden. And you know what? He talked a little earlier in the day about the fact that the, the Kentucky Bass fishing doesn't run good two days in a row. He said they're on one day and right. on Right, he had a exactly. real good day yesterday, and now he's struggling just a little bit. Small. And, you know, I don't know if he takes real credit for uh, this drop shotting. You know, I, you know what? I think it started actually in Japan and uh, now moved over to the West Coast and on into uh, Lake Martin. A lot of people in Alabama certainly interested a in boy, drop shot I fishing say, right now. Even uh, Guido Hibden, I believe, who also is catching up. As a matter of fact, we've got three guys that are just really crowding 10 pounds now. Well, that is lunch right there for Aaron Martins. Now, he may look like he's eating, but he is fishing at the same time. You can be that focused. Let's go talk to Guido Hibden for just a moment, a guy who's known for his ability to really see those fish. You know, I watch around these docks and these boat ramps and stuff like that, and the fish that I feel like I can catch is that fish that's looking away from me. You know, if I happen upon one and he's looking away from me, then I feel like I got a real good shot at him. You know, I, I, I make myself believe I can catch them all, but it's, uh, if he's looking at you, no, your chances of catching him are slim and none. You know, a trick worm would probably, probably be the right bait to throw at him. It, those that you're looking, or I mean, that are looking at you. Of course, you know, if you were just a little better looking, it might help, too. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> you are rotten, boy. <laughs> you don't have to be good looking. You got, you got such a great team, and I know we've talked about this before. I mean, having D on there to, yep. to, 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 to collaborate with, I mean, the, one of the best fishermen in the world, you know, right there at the very top, that's got to be a big plus for any angler. Well, it... You know, Dion's a great guy. He, I keep calling him a kid, but I mean, he, he's a great gentleman himself, and uh, he's come a long ways. And and the crazy thing about it is, I mean, everybody gives me credit for teaching him. That, that boy has taught me as much as I ever taught him, that's for sure. It's changed a lot over the years. Uh, you know, now I can help him a little bit. It used to be it was a one-sided coin. You know, he was always coaching me and helping me and pushing me down the road, and it's changed a little bit now. You know, I can, every now and then I get to help him back. We're fishing against the fish. We never, uh, the only thing is he worries about me on the water and I worry about him, you know. We've rambled on that away for, I've been there for 16 years now, so it ain't hurt us too bad. We, we, can, we can complain about it a little bit, but it ain't hurt us too bad. That, we'll get rid of that little one. That's a two pounder, that helps a lot. That's about three quarters of a pound right there. Oh, he wasn't coming off. Look at our predicament right now. With that fish, we are tightening up Aaron Martins, Takahiro Omori, Guido Hibden, all five fish, all unofficially right at 10 pounds as we get ready for weigh-in time. You know, we talked earlier about fishing as a sport in Japan. Well, they also have a magazine comparable in quality to Sports Illustrated that is dedicated to bass fishing. It usually carries coverage of American fishing as well. Our magazine, Wasser, is the, one of the most famous and the biggest number. And the circulation is about a quarter million in one month. 
and we established our magazine about uh, 1986. Bass fishing from the United States, so uh, we learned a lot of American fishermen. So uh, that's a dream. <laughs> we challenge. And the Basser Magazine photographer there, Yasutaka Ogasawara, as well as the Japanese exchange anglers, all back at the weigh-in site in the tent, ready to see if their man, Takahiro, can come through and take home the trophy, and we are just minutes away. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Everstart Batteries. More power for your money. By BF Goodrich. Take control. By Sitco. We know you. And by Mercury, the water calls. If an FLW is ever in your area, catch the weigh-in. It's quite a show. And of course, we don't really have enough time to show it all to you on TV. In fact, today we've already eliminated Clun and Shumpert. Aaron Martins has taken the lead, but is out of fish. And Hibden and Amore are left. Got to get, got to get to four eight, four eight. That fish was 2-5. <laughs> and I believe that might do it. A limit that fish. Do it. A limit of fish for Takahiro. Two fish in this bag. Total weight of these two fish. Five pounds, four ounces a new leader. Four. All right, Takahiro, take a seat. Aaron, come on up. To have a big hand for Aaron Martins. He thrilled everyone all week. Well, I tell you what. Uh, People who were making predictions predict, a lot of folks, as you know, predicted you today, had a great pattern going, very confident about the type of fish you were catching. Today, it just kind of got behind the curve a little bit and never could catch up. Yeah, the, the last two days got really tough. Um, I missed a bunch of fish today and yesterday, and they were just short biting it. The fish I was fishing for were, were really deep, and uh, they just weren't on today. They weren't really feeding. All right. Another big hand for Aaron Martins. We'll sit Aaron up here in the front of the boat, and wow, 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 wow. What a moment for the first FLW Tour stop here on Lake Martin. The hottest bass angler in the world right now, Takahiro Omori, is our leader. He's weighed in a limit of fish. 10 pounds, 14 ounces, our leader, Takahiro Omori, and one of the most accomplished, most awarded bass anglers of all time. The only other man left in this thing, Guido Hibden. He's only weighed in three fish. His two, or whatever he has left, has to equal four pounds, 14 ounces. Takahiro, come on up. We're all going to get close by. And Guido's going to see if he can make 414 and win the championship. Guido, let's take a look. You ready, Takahiro? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you ready, Guido? I'm ready, I guess. He's ready. <laughs> There's one. We're looking let's for check 414. This run here. Hold it just a second. We'll check this run here, Tommy. The Kentucky Spotted Everybody's Bass. looking. That weighs one pound. <laughs> yeah. One pound. 11 ounces. One See more these. fish. Oh. Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. 314. 414. Is 414. What 414 is what we're looking for. 414 for Guido to win. Four pounds, three ounces. Takahiro's our champion. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's really hear it for our champ here, Takahiro. What a guy. <laughs> Wonderful moment. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Takahiro, we first ran into Takahiro on the FLW Tour, I think it was at Santee Cooper, five years ago, 1996, just arrived here in the United States. Had a tent set up, had camp, didn't know the language so well, didn't know the culture so well, was trying to learn American bass fishing. You've come a long, long way since then, Takahiro. Yeah, it took me a while, but I just did it. <laughs> you just did it, and you've been doing it and doing it. Tell us about your whole week. Did you sort of have a feeling that this was going to be a special week for you? Actually, I, I was not. You did not feel it would be? I figured out a little bit more every day during the tournament. Oh. I just unbelievable. But like I said, I had a Guido and a Rick, Rick, and all the guys who made the top five. 
Yeah, <laughs> I can't say much. Oh, it's just incredible. What a, what a feel. What a great feel to win your championship, your very first championship on the Walmart FLW Tour against. One quick hand for Takahiro. We're going to get him back up here in just a second. Right now, we want to talk to our runner-up, get Guido up here. So close, 10 ounces. You weren't kidding this morning. You said it's all or nothing. I'm going for it. Not interested in second, and, and you fish like you weren't interested in second place. No, it, uh, it, it, it's a, been a fun tournament. It really has. I love this lake and the people around it. I mean, it, it, the people around this lake has got to be the greatest people in the world. I, I mean, it, unbelievable. I tell you what, uh, you got to be proud of all in all the week's work. Oh, I am. I, you know, I've done all I could do, and I, I'm exceptionally proud of Taki Hero. I mean, he's a, he's a great kid, a great kid. You know, anybody under 30 is a kid to me. It's, uh, but he is. I mean, he works hard at it. You know, I told him the other day, I said, man, don't you ever wear out? And he said, how are you going to wear out doing what you want to do? Absolutely. He's so right. Did you ever see that big one? I know you're looking for that big one. Before he saw you today, did you ever see him? No, I seen... Uh, it clouded up a little bit, you know, and I was throwing a little gambler trick worm and, and a little finesse worm, and, and I, it clouded up, and they stayed a little deeper, you know. I, I had to hustle today. I really did. A Fuji flashback today. Well, Takahiro's $100,000 check wasn't too heavy, but me and some of his other prizes were. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.